but I appreciate you uh, coming uh, to this retreat. As I told the kids, um, the, uh, the, the idea, the reason why I asked parents to come at 11.30 uh, was to kind of wrap up the weekend and put a bow on it and help um, you all carry this experience forward and home uh, because this is, we have a culture that is relative, right? We all look for moments in our lives. Life is made up of moments, my dad always says. But some moments are important than other, others. And um, a retreat moment really is a, a, a defining moment in one's faith life. Uh, it's a moment that is much like the, the mass. It is a moment that transcends space and time um, and represents a reality to us, a heavenly reality. Um, it, it's not simply something that we say, oh, I had my God moment, I move on, and go equate that to a Bruno Mars concert. You know, they, There's something different between a Bruno's, Bruno Mars concert and a confirmation retreat. And we have to recognize that because our society says, oh, that's cute. You can have this little retreat experience, and it's, and it's yours, and whatever. As long as it's in a little bubble and nobody else touches it, it's your experience. That's the world we live in today. Um, so it's really important that we kind of burst the bubble and we take the retreat out into the world, because that's what we're called to do. So that's the real, the real reason why uh, I invited you as parents to come here and just uh, have a little bit of a wrap up. Uh, so we have had an incredibly powerful weekend. Um, and, you know, when we walked in here Friday night, um, <laughs> there's always this nervous energy. Where are we going? What are we doing? Um, how are we going to get there? There's all of that. And I always, I always say by about middle of the day on Saturday, all of that's gone. We realize that all of us here are kind of stuck here. And, and um, the, the Holy Spirit then goes to work. He goes to work through our exhaustion. Um, it, that does help us uh, lower some of the barriers that we need to lower. But in addition to that, there's also the sacraments. Some of the things that we did and we encountered here are, again, heavenly realities that we make present here. We had the opportunity for the sacrament of reconciliation first and foremost, okay? Uh, the sacrament of reconciliation was a powerful experience. We talked a lot about God's power this weekend. It's a powerful experience. Uh, your children encountered the mercy of God and had their sins wiped clean. It's amazing to think that they all have a clean slate going forward, right? They, they now have an, an opportunity at a new beginning in their life. And we, and we often get opportunities to have new beginnings, but this is a special one, as I said. And then not only did that happen, we were able to experience the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And, you know, once all the roadblocks to Christ are eliminated from our hearts, he has direct access. <laughs> he doesn't have to swerve around any, um, he doesn't have to swerve around any potholes. He doesn't have to do anything. He can get right to us. And that's what happens in Holy Communion. That's the reason why we go to Mass, right? We go to Mass to encounter the living God in the Eucharist. And when we receive that living God into our hearts, he fills it. But not only that. Last night, we also had the opportunity, and it is powerful when we get to encounter God in this way, to adore Jesus in the Eucharist through Eucharistic adoration. Yes, the Eucharist is supposed to be consumed. It is food. It is bread from heaven. Absolutely. But our church also teaches this wonderful devotion of Eucharistic adoration. And Eucharistic adoration is simply this. It's an opportunity to worship God in his resurrected form. I said to the kids last night, the monstrance 
means to show. So we put the Eucharist, we put the large host in the monstrance, and we show off Jesus' power, his glory, his resurrection, his uh, strength as Lord and creator of each and every one of us. Pope Benedict Emeritus says that Eucharistic adoration, when we spend prolonged time in front of the Eucharist, it prolongs and intensifies the Eucharistic sacrifice. I love that. I absolutely love that because that's exactly what happened last night. The Eucharistic sacrifice of our Lord was prolonged and intensified. And with Deacon Joe's hands, his ordained hands as an ordained minister of the church, Jesus was able to walk through each and every one of us just like he walked through Jerusalem. And he stood before each and every one of us a few inches away from our face just to gaze into him, his flesh, that we believe is still here. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, graces were released. I always like to say, you could feel the Holy Spirit dripping from the ceiling. Um, the power of the Holy Spirit was truly dripping from the ceiling last night. And this experience um, is one that also needs to be illuminated by our lives. So in addition to encountering these nuts and bolts of our Catholic faith, the meat and potatoes of what we are as Catholics, confession, Eucharist, mass, adoration, we also express that through the way we live. And so I would like to thank all of the catechists and chaperones uh, that have joined us over the course of the weekend, our speakers. Um, they have done an amazing job helping your students, your children, understand what it means to live that way. So we talked about God's unconditional love. We talked about God's merciful love, recognizing God's love. God's powerful love and God's plan. And each of us gave a witness on how Christ uses us as instruments. And we then spent time in small groups talking about those over the course of the weekend. And talking about you know, how Christ is using us right now in the present. In this protected retreat bubble. We were able to really dig deep without Snapchat interrupting us uh, and without all of the pressures of the world. That's the reason why the church puts great emphasis on this. They put great emphasis on retreats, not only for uh, youth making their retreat for confirmation, but throughout our lives. We're called to spend time away from the busyness of society. And because we know, and it has happened for us here this weekend, it's happened for me, that our faith is reinvigorated. You know, you, you, you call it a retreat high, or a Jesus high, or whatever you want to call it, but you have this, like, where you feel like you're walking on clouds. And that feeling quickly dissipates. That feeling quickly goes away when you leave the retreat. It's like you can't replicate what we do here. You can't replicate what the Holy Spirit has done here. And in the 20 plus retreats I've given over 11 years, you can't replicate the, the, the graces that are given at each and every one of them. So each one is unique, each one is special. And as I said, as we pack up and we leave, boom, it's gone. But the fruits, what we've been given remains. So even though the, the external feeling might go away, the, the internal change is still a reality. And it's really important that parents understand that because I, I really wish mine did when I was in um, high school. I really wish my parents understood that and they didn't. Um, because 
what we've encountered is the Holy Spirit in all his power. And when you go home and, yeah, you've got things to do. I got it, right? You've got homework, mountains of it probably. You, there's, there's no Packer game today. But um, there, you have things to do. Life hits. But you have to take time to process this and be able to understand um, and, and differentiate between the feeling of, of an experience like this and the realities of the changes that Christ has made in your life. It's important to talk to somebody about that. It's really important to talk to somebody about that. Parents, grandparents, sponsors all have a role in that. Uh, I strongly encourage you to take an hour today and talk with your children about this experience, the good, the bad, the late night hikes, um, the, 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 mar the marching through the swamp, the, the carrying people over the bridges, uh, all of it. There's, there's good, there's bad, there's fun, um, but, but really invest time in listening to their stories uh, because it's going to help them in their minds separate out, hey, you're going to go, wow, I can't believe I'm that different. This is what, 72 hours, not even 72 hours later? I can't believe I'm that, I can't believe I had that much. And, and even if you're one, of, one of you students are out there thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't feel that change. It's not about, again, it's not about a feeling. But when, when you start talking about it, when you start taking it home, you realize, oh, yeah, I can't believe that. I am that much change. I am that different. Wow. And then that helps settle the emotions and helps us carry this forward, right? It gives us a plan to carry these things forward and out into the world. And we need to do that, right? We have to carry this out into the world. Um, this is a new beginning in some respects. Um, it's a brand new beginning. And... They can be exciting, they can be daunting, they can be challenging. All of those things are true. I encourage you to take the time today to, today, not tomorrow, to really invest in it. Uh, kids, uh, I will tell you this, you have everything that you need to live your Catholic faith after this retreat. You have everything you ever need to live it. It's very simple. Confession, mass, prayer. Daily. Confession, mass, prayer. That is what our bishops, that's what our priests, that's what our pope, they all recommend. Confession, mass, prayer. Daily is great. Um, doesn't, confession doesn't have to be daily. Mass doesn't have to be daily, but it should be weekly. And why? Because the reality, even if you don't feel it, is that our God wants to encounter you and be, caught, be a part of you. I've said that a few times this weekend. We're the only church on the planet, we're the only religion on the planet that believes that their God in the flesh, in the Eucharist, under that form, lives on this earth, physically, a real presence, and not only that, he wants to dwell in your heart. That should blow your mind. There's not another religion on the planet that believes that. We, it doesn't matter how bad, and Father Dan's an excellent homily. It doesn't matter how bad Father Dan preaches. It doesn't matter um, you know, what person is up there. The Eucharist is still the Eucharist. And the God that wants to encounter you in it is still the God that wants to encounter you in it. That's the reason why we're Catholic. That's the reason why I'm Catholic. I said that to the kids last night, but it's important to repeat. So make that a frequent thing. Guys, when you make that frequent, you can live this the rest of your life. You know, the graces that were poured out here are much like what was poured out upon the apostles at Pentecost. And what's going to happen 
at confirmation is that's going to be sealed on your soul. The power and the grace that you felt here this weekend is going to be sealed. Right? It's like having a piece of paper and running it through a laminator. You run that through. And what happens? It's now protected from the wet, the storms, and you know, other things. So that's what happens. It becomes sealed. It comes to be part of you. Um, and that's why confirmation is so important. That's the reason why following through, that's the reason why your parents may have given you a nudge to do it. Because they know that having those graces sealed on your soul is so very important as you go through life. This is an experience that may reshape and rechange your life if you take the time to reflect on it and carry it forward. I, I want to share one scripture in closing, in closing, and it's one of my favorite scriptures. Um, because, you know, in, in, this, uh, in this world, we, we compete against so much. If we believe God is real, we have to believe that there is a force out there to take that away, to defeat us. Satan is very real, just as real as God is. We wouldn't have faith, we wouldn't have any need for faith if Satan wasn't real. Satan tries to convince millions of people all around the world he doesn't exist. From priests and bishops all the way down to children. There are many ways he does that, but it's our duty to remember that this is real and we are in a war. As I said to the kids last night, this is not going to be easy. Just because we get an experience of the resurrection, just because we have an experience of Christ as a personal God, he is now calling us to greatness with him. And that greatness means that we, as Christians, are call, and Catholics, are called to the cross, to join him on the cross. So there will be suffering and there will be pain in our lives ahead. Nothing is going to be perfect in life. That's something that differentiates us from our Protestant brothers and sisters. That we are called, Christ doesn't just wipe away everything. He says, no, come with me to the cross so you can help more souls to heaven. That's how he works. So, here's some scripture from St. Paul, from Ephesians, that talks about this battle and what you need to carry on. And I leave it with you. I hope that you open the Bible every once in a while. Find a smartphone app now that you have your phones back. Truth and Life Audio Bible, whatever it is. Download a Bible to your phone. Save this in there. And look at it. It says, Finally, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For a struggle is not with the flesh and the blood, but with the powers and principalities, with the rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything, to hold your ground. So stand fast, with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a breastplate and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you have what you need, right? You have what you need. Hold the shield of faith that you've gained this weekend in front of you. There are going to be arrows that are going to be fired at you. <laughs> it's just how it works. Hold that in front of you. As you go back to school and you encounter different situations, as you go back to work and encounter different situations, hold that in front of you. Put on the helmet of salvation. Where do we find salvation again? It's the Eucharist. Confession. Mass. 
You, that is our helmet of salvation. That keeps our head protected. Keeps us alive. Anybody knows in battle the most, most important thing to keep is the head and the heart. Right? Shield, faith defends the heart. This salvation defends the head, right? The sacraments defend that. Hold that in front of you. And then take the sword of the spirit that you have this week. And yes, it's the word of God. It's the Bible. But it's also the word of God that's been implanted in your heart from the catechists from those of us who have told our stories, those of you uncovering your stories, the word of God is implanted in there, right? That's what it says in scripture. The word of God is effective and it's planted in our hearts, written in our hearts. Carry that sword of the spirit as your weapon and you will defeat it. Yes, you're going to lose battles. The helmet's going to come off, folks. But we know we have the tools to return to it. We have the tools to pick it up, put it back on. Prayer, confession, mass. That's all you need. It sounds so simple, but it is so hard. Prayer, confession, and mass. It's so simple, and it's so hard. Um, so thank you for investing in this very special time.